When you're looking at the Internet of Things uh, and you have a device like a Nest thermostat, it has a chip in there that needs to communicate with the Internet. Well, Electric Imp uh, came out of Nest and came out of Apple, and we're going to talk about uh, security and what is inside uh, uh, the stuff that's going to be powering your life soon. I'm Hugo Feins. I'm co-founder and the CEO of uh, Electric Imp, uh, which is a company which connects things to the internet. Yeah. Give me a little bit about your background, because it's quite an interesting background. So uh, I used to make MP3 players uh, a long time ago. Then I got to uh, get into Apple, um, working on a secret project, which turned out to be the iPhone. Uh, I was hardware manager for the iPhone for the first four phones. Then I was uh, architect for another year, working on some other stuff. Um, and then I got involved with Nest. Um, I designed and architect the first Nest thermostat product. Uh, fortunately, didn't join. <laughs> fortunately <laughs> or unfortunately? It depends which way you look at it. <laughs> for for Vetra Kim, fortunately. Um, but really interesting experiences um, with, with both those companies. And uh, from that came Electric Imp, which is pretty much uh, the solution to the problem I saw over and over again whilst building connected devices. Yeah, and you have a, a few chips here. Um, what are these chips and what context does this give us about your company? So these things here are um, a couple of electric imp modules. There's, there's one of these is the larger one and this is the, the new smaller one, which is really tiny. It's like sort of 10 by eight millimeters. Yeah. Both of those have uh, Wi-Fi and a processor inside. Um, it's one part of our solution. So to connect something to the internet, obviously you need communications is one part, so Wi-Fi. Um, yeah. You also need something to talk to, which in our case is the cloud service. To make this really work well together, we kind of did an, an Apple-y type take on it, which means that it isn't just a Wi-Fi chip and hey, here's some software to make it talk to our cloud service. It's like really integrated. So this has got uh, an embedded OS, um, which handles all the security, handles seamless updates and so on basically very, very secure, uh, talks to our cloud service. And it's this tight, tight coupling, which means it's the it just works type of thing. Um, so one of the things about connected devices is that, you know, unlike most consumer devices, if you get a connected water heater, hey, it's going to be online for 10 years. Yeah. Um, 10 years is a very long time in computers and in software updates and, and that type of context. So if I'm a water heater manufacturer, you know, the people, making, the people making the connected devices, one of the things that they, they have to do is think differently about, like, oh, it's not just a one-off product, it's shipped, and, you know, usually you ship it, it's out the door, unless it goes wrong, it never comes back. Um, you need to keep things secure on the long term. So um, the way we do that is we actually separate the problem down in the hardware, separate it out. So there's actually a virtual machine in each of these things. The virtual machine allows us to separate the OS with all the security parts in it from the application. Yeah. Which Let, means let's back up for a second okay. before we go uh, completely, all the way down. completely nerdy. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're selling these to, uh, well, tell me about your business at a high level. Who needs you? For so um, the people who need us are people who are building connected devices, essentially. So everything from very big companies, um, like things like the quirky uh, GE RS air conditioner, the connected air conditioner uses us, um, down to talking toys, things like toy mail, and if you've seen those, which are really cool little things. Yeah. Um, uh, Ratio, connected watering system, Locketron, people like that. They all use us to connect. Uh, is it allows them to actually build on like a stable connectivity platform and actually concentrate on the application. Yeah. And I think that's one of the, the issues with some of the first generation of connected devices was it's actually there was so much work to get them connected. That they didn't have the time to like put the, the finesse in on the application. As if you're like Nest, you had the financing, you had the people to do this, but not everyone has that amount of effort to put into the connectivity part of their solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this allows companies to play on a, on a level playing field. So the, this chip is basically a, a connectivity chip that gets you your device uh, uh, on the internet, basically? It, yeah, it's not just, uh, it's like you, know, you say, it's like a Wi-Fi chip. Wi-Fi chips get you on Wi-Fi. This gets you on the internet. I mean, essentially, every device that has one of these in has its own URL, 
Uh, it has code that can run up in the cloud side, which is great. So we run like Pico VMs for everything in the field, it has its own little Pico VM in the cloud, wow. which is kind of cool. So we run tens of thousands of those on per server. It's kind of like a, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty dense hosting solution. So we, we have all that and there's a VM in the device. And this allows you to like evolve your solution. I mean, one of the things about connected devices, a lot of people keep on having ideas, but it's like if they ship something out, it's just like, oh, well, we can make it do this and this and this. And with our yeah. platform, you can just really add solutions, well, change even, the shape of it. Even these things, right? Um, these uh, activity trackers, they're sort of connected, right? Yeah. But you, you might want to add a feature to that. Or, yeah, or and, it's, and like it, when, when you have Bluetooth LE, it's great for wearables. And, you know, we don't really compete in the wearables thing. It's more for independently connected devices. Like cups and vacuum cleaners. And <laughs> Anything you might want to access when you're away. Yeah. Or that might have a need to talk to the manufacturer. So, you know, a vacuum cleaner could, hey, like, you know, reorder vacuum bags um, automatically. Or, you know, your fridge could reorder water filters. Or all these type of things which are connected connected sort of uh, supply chain things. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of things, there's a lot of value, not just to the user, but to the manufacturer, because they want to know like, oh, on this washing machine, you know, on all the, like, the dial with the 50 different options, who uses what? And she's like, if everyone just uses this one, 99% of our users just ignore all these other settings. Maybe we should just make a simpler washing machine. Maybe we should expand that out into the, the different categories, that one wash, and have more options on that, because that's what people use. But right now, they don't know. They do, can, they do survey groups and stuff, but it's not the same as something sitting in someone's home and being used day in, day out. So why does your washing machine or your cup or your locks Need to need to have a place up on the cloud that also is. To, for, to, why are the two virtual machines? Why is yeah, there the yeah, intelligence yeah. in the cloud? Um, one of the things is is that when you're making a device talk to an internet server, um, if you want to put all the stuff on the device to deal with you know parsing JSON and doing all the complex bits to make a RESTful API stuff, that uh, takes a lot more resources. It'll use more power and make the device more expensive. Yeah. More complexity down in the device is generally a bad thing. So splitting it means you do cloud side things where the, the cloud is best at doing them yeah. in the cloud and device side things in the device. It allows you to like split the, the problem into two halves. One which isn't resource constrained, one which doesn't use batteries. Um, and that actually works really well. I mean, in other things also, it, it usually ends up, if people do their own solution, they end up with some ugly glue yeah. <laughs> between the thing and, say, their SAP backend system. Um, and the ugly glue doesn't scale well because, hey, one guy wrote it, and then when they get to, like, 100,000 in the field, it's like the ugly glue is looking really ugly. Um, with our stuff, we scale the glue for you, and it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So you don't worry about it. You just make more things. We deal with the server-side scaling, which for a manufacturer, which is generally they don't have expertise in cloud services, they don't have expertise in security, yeah. they, have, they know everything about their target market, you know, what they're building, their customers, the hardware, and making boxes and shipping them out the door, they know everything about that. It allows them to st 